wealthy Jamie Dimon just out with his annual letter for J.P. Morgan shareholders. The J.P. Morgan Chase CEO says that lower tax rates were a long time coming and that they've helped boost both U.S. competitiveness and his own bank's bottom line. Diamond says that the bank has grown despite what he calls unprecedented challenges and that it plans to maintain a fortress balance sheet. He also says he's fine with government regulation as long as it's good regulation. He does address the issue of share buybacks, saying that they are an essential part of proper capital allocation, although secondary to long-term investing. And he says that the bank is prepared, prepared for, but he is not predicting a recession. These are just a few of the bullet points in a very long letter to investors. Uh, Jamie Dimon writes this letter himself. He has long taken on issues that, that go far outside just what the bank is doing. Right. He, he kind of sees himself as speaking out on what he thinks is right in, in capitalism, what he thinks is... Uh, right in business and what he thinks wrong in business too. Wanted to point out two things because we com we have this conversation on the set a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his subsections is called "The American Dream is Alive but Fraying for Many," and he goes into this issue of capitalism versus socialism and says, "I'm not an advocate for unregulated, unvarnished, free for all capitalism. Few people I know are, but we shouldn't forget the true freedom and free enterprise capitalism that is, are at some point in in." Exhibit, you know the word. Inexorably, I'm for, inexorably, inexorably, inexorably linked. linked. It's true freedom and, and free markets. And yeah. and but then also talks about the middle class incomes that have been stagnant for years. And and I think what he's trying to get at is this idea that actually capitalism is now under threat in a meaningful way, and mm -hmm. that and, and, and that there has true. I mean, no one. It, it's what he's saying. How, how could capitalism be under a threat if if you just said that freedom? <laughs> And capitalism are inexorably linked. How, how does because your conclusion come to that? Because unfortunately, and I'll say unfortunately, there's a conversation in America today uh, among a lot of millennials and young people that capitalism is no longer the way. Yeah, millennials, and, uh, that's the key okay. word. And, that's the key word. Do they, do they know from whence they speak, Andrew, and or will the, they eventually figure the, it out? I'm not advocating for this, Joseph. You, you are right. What, what are you doing right now then? I'm making. I'm. I, we're having the We're letter. having the conversation. I'm we're reading, having the conversation. I'm reading from the letter. Well, the I'm letter just the, said that they're inexorably linked. That freedom and free enterprises. Just yes, but if you, so you have how to is that acknowledge, the, how does that mean capitalism is on its last legs? Right now, there's a debate going on in America about whether capitalism is working for people in this country. That 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 is a fact. I think okay? that is that a is fallacious. A that you may is, think it's a fallacious debate, but that's the well, debate that's being had. Well, if we know the answer, if we know the answer, then then why? And, and as a result, we can debate I think what anything. he's trying to do in this letter is address why capitalism is the better way, Joseph. That's yes. why I would think that okay. you would think this is a good I letter. Do. I, I do, and, and I. But he's I, acknowledging that there's a larger conversation being had. We've had a conversation. Has, by the way, whether we might have to approach capitalism slightly differently. Where are these sections? I'm looking through a 74-page report, and I'm still trying to find this. I will, I will get you there. It's, it's you know, it, it, we don't need to debate it because it's so simple. There's two different approaches. There's redistribution, which where you split up a smaller pie more, more evenly, or you grow the pie and, and hope that through wage gains and tight employment and the organic way that we're now starting to see some increase in, in wages, that's... As much as you think that, that capitalism is, it hasn't had the, the same payoff it had in this country as it has in the past, we've still got the highest GDP by a long shot because of what we don't. It's $60,000. We're $10,000 in China right now. We still have uh, uh, people live in poverty in this country, but we're working on it. We've, and, we, and capitalism has taken more people out of, Joseph, out of I'm like, not millions of people. So. I, I, I understand that You're you want to get me to disagree with. This. Well, then what are you saying? Can can I just bring up another point he brings up that I think is really important too? Um, we've talked in the past about what happens if there's right. another downturn. Again, he's not predicting a recession. He doesn't see right. that, but he says they're prepared for it if he does. He does warn though that you can expect the banks to be far more constrained going into the next real downturn. When the next downturn begins, banks will be constrained both psychologically and by new regulations from lending freely into the marketplace, as many of us did in 2008 and 2009. All the new regulations mean yep. the banks will have to maintain more liquidity going into a downturn and be prepared for the impacts of even tougher stress tests and hold more capital. Uh, not to mention the psychological from what happened to them last time around when they were punished for doing some of these things. He says, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase will simply be unable to take some of the actions that we took back in 2008 as described in the sidebar above. Um, that's something right. that I think is really important for the next time that happens um, because for all the flack that they received, big banks like J.P. Morgan Chase did do some very big lending into this. If they can't do it next time around, it, they won't be able to mitigate the effects right. 
um, as effectively as they did the no, last time. No, that's absolutely very real. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know the, the part of the Democratic Party that, that, that you're alluding to, and that's why it's unfortunate that a guy like Howard Schultz, which actually has a, a more even uh, a, 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 a approach to these type of things, that's why the Republicans are, are, are so excited that, that you give credence to Bernie Sanders' ideas and AOC's ideas and the far left of the Democratic Party, which is, which, is, not a, which is more so. It's never going to be this in this country, Andrew. It's not. And you can see that the... Well, I'm you not can see the, for it to be. I, I'm suggesting... Well, you're talking you, about millennials think that we should have a discussion about socialism versus capitalism. That's because they're wrong. It doesn't mean that's that... That's fine. But, but Jamie Dimon has a whole section in his letter... That you just said uh, arrived at capitalism. capitalism. versus socialism, right? right? It, that, but, okay? But, and what, he's, what not is pretend, he's not pretending that there's no debate. Okay? okay. He's and, not pretending uh, like you oh, great. that there's no debate in America. I'm hearing you debate. somehow magically working. And where does he come... What side does he come down on? He ultimately comes down on capitalism. Okay. But the issue is... How how do you make cap? It's not. Un he's not saying just go go along with this unfettered capitalism. He's I saying didn't say, we have. Did I ever say unfettered? You're saying not even to contemplate that there's a conversation to be had. That's I, the I, issue. Versus capitalism, socialism. I, I stand by that.